The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everyone. This is Teddy Kekstaff from Forex Trading Unlocked, and I'm filling in for Tommy O'Brien today. So I hope uh, you guys enjoy the show that we have planned for you today. So we're going to start right away into the Forex markets. We have the forex-trading-unlocked.com website pulled up today. Uh, oh, hi. How are you doing? <laughs> i got some people in the chat room right saying hello. All right. So we have the Euro US dollar uh, chart already pulled up here for you. As you guys are pretty aware that we have a lot of uh, interesting things going on with the central banks and other fundamental markets that drive currency pricing. Uh, the one thing that's very noticeable that you can see right here with the euro, US dollar, is that the bears have complete control over this market. So uh, we've had a little bit of a consolidation over the past, say, week and a half, as you can see at the end of April into May. And we're trying to break out. We had this uh, lower move high that was set last week, and we just seem to be getting more contracting range every day over the past few sessions. So uh, economic numbers are something that you're going to have to really watch when it comes to the U.S. dollar moving forward for the EU and also for uh, Germany explicitly. Uh, their economy is contracting at a faster rate than ours is. And I think if you see this trend continue, you're going to see the euro US dollar get below parity in the, um, the relatively short term future, uh, meaning like probably the next two to three months, definitely before the summer times uh, over with August. So there's other um, things driving this as well. Uh, we have the uh, high price in the bill, and we also have obviously trending uh, interest rates uh, higher in the US. So the fact that our central bank is being much more aggressive than things are over in the, uh, the EU, this will continue to support the dollar. So um, the dollar is not necessarily a bull, but I want you all to be aware of that. It's just that most of our other currency crosses out there are that weak against the dollar. So uh, if you notice, we have this downward sloping resistance line that's keeping the channel intact. And when we try to break out to the upside, it failed. You can see that momentum was so strong that we couldn't even get up to this upper part of the channel. And we had a, an area that's basically a dollar of seven up to a dollar of seven fifty six as a retracement area to have a kind of nice profit taking like correction if if you feel, could manifest that. We didn't have enough strength to have that happen. Now remember the dollar index obviously is really strong right now. Euro being the number one component the one thing that's really driving that. So this is also causing the dollar index to look a little choppy as well right now, consolidating, because you can look at this chart. It's almost basically an inverted chart right now. Um, we do have a lot of action today in the other foreign currency crosses. We're going to continue to move on to those as we get through this program. And if you have any questions about any of them, uh, just please uh, be feel free to uh, leave something in the chat, and I'll try and uh, to uh, some of them as we go through this. All right, so as we go through one more thing about the euro US dollar, I want to take a look at the uh, monthly real quick. Okay, if you look at the monthly, you can see how devastating of a slide we had last month. Okay, now the war in Ukraine is remaining definitely on this market. You can see that in the past two months, this market has gotten much more volatile and really starts to probe support support very, very hard. This trend I would expect to continue over the next few weeks, a few months, until we start to see some sort of at least calming resolution between Russia and Ukraine. Um, I, how when's that going to happen? I don't know. But as far as the trading outlook, I keep it in your focus. These trends are going to gain and tap at least the next few months because we don't have any signs of any reprieve right now. So now is the damage done already for this market? I think that initial shock of the 
uh, conflict is definitely already factored into the euro us dollar the main thing you need to really focus on now are the economic numbers both for the us but also predominantly for the eu and especially for germany because as these continue to trend lower you think you're going to really see a lot more pressure okay now as how far can we go i think it's definitely a good shot so we get to that I would expect to see a lot of volatility and a lot of bouncing around. I think you're going to find support really too quickly. I don't think you're going to have a spike bottom and all of a sudden see a radical um, rally. So kind of like we saw back when uh, the COVID uh, epic pandemic actually first started. Okay. So this is something to be very mindful. We have a little bit of divergence that was going on in a lot of these crosses versus the dollar. However, in the past couple of weeks, Diversions is starting to wane. Okay, so and if you guys have any questions about what that means as far as any currency process that you um, are trading, please put something in the chat and I'll address that. Okay, so when it comes to these factors, you have to think about something like um, when are the impacts of central banks to help their currencies, especially because the euro right now see it's trending lower so that's being devalued is it such a big thing for the eu that the it was now trading the 105 year and for um 69 years there i would say that you know it doesn't mean that much in the short run for this particular currency because the euro is still relatively strong now if you take a look at something like the us dollar again which we're going to get to and even the way the pound is selling off recently that kind of magnitude is is a totally different story and if that's that continues over the next week or two then that's a very big indication that the trends are not even remotely over but they this acceleration process is going to start to really have ripple effects into many of the markets especially equity markets commodity markets and all kinds of other markets um out there so uh, just be very mindful forward as we head into some time because these things are really going to start to grow because remember most indicators and most numbers or excuse me are lagging so i already know that the numbers have started to show for the past few months and now as we get into the summertime it's no longer a fresh who's saying we know that there's a trend being established as far as negative momentum for these things um let's see we have Teddy Mike's a little choppy. Let's see if I can adjust this a little bit. Maybe that helps it a little bit. Um, so I know I have a little feedback from my uh, audience, so I don't know if that has something to do with it. So, but thank you for pointing that out. Okay, so for the Euro US dollar, right now you can see that the range is really tight today. Take a look at the hourly real quick. You can see that since uh, coming into the US uh, market opening and stuff like that, we have a little bit of volatility. I think right now you have the outputs picking up. We'll see what happens. We have some oil numbers that are going to impact things definitely later today. Uh, so uh, I'm very mindful of oil too, because as oil does rally, odds are very likely that you're going to see Euro US dollar have trouble falling. And we're going to go to break. See you in a couple minutes. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. All right, welcome back, everybody. This is Teddy Kekstad from Forex Trading Unlock, filling in for Tommy O'Brien today. And I think we're supposed to have Kevin Hinks on the line. Kevin, are you there? No, Kevin is not there. I don't see anything in the chat. They said that uh, he might not be there. Okay, well, I hope the mic is better now. I think we may have fixed it. Um, I don't have the uh, uh, feedback in my uh, um, audio, so hopefully you don't either anymore. All right, so uh, Kevin's not on the line yet, so we'll just go back into what we're talking about. We're talking about the FX markets today, live right now. We have the British pound, US dollar, which is also like the euro, kind of having a restricted tight range. We will get to some volatility. There's some stuff going on in a couple other crosses, but first let's cover what's going on in Europe. So British pound, US dollar, also in a bear market. Uh, there's, uh, just as we were talking about with the euro, you have to pay attention to uh, the economic numbers in the UK. Um, they have a lot of issues um, similar to what the EU does, not as much as the EU though. Um, remember that because of Brexit, the UK sovereign now is definitely helping to make them and their economy much stronger than the EU is. And there's, there's certain variables that don't impact them, especially the energy uh, cost. Well, energy cost pricing definitely is impacting them, but as far as the availability of it is not because uh, the UK is actually an energy provider. So the price of oil going up is definitely helping to um, in somewhat lessen the blow of the uh, the depreciation of the pound versus the dollar. Now, interestingly enough, I had a conversation with um, some people from the EU and also the UK over the past weekend. And both of them, I asked them, I'm like, are, do you think your central banks or your uh, governments are going to do something to defend your currency? Now, like I mentioned in the last segment, the euro is not really, even though it is in a bear market, it is not at like horrible levels. If it was another 20 handles lower, I would say, look out. Oh, oh, Kevin is here. Okay. All right. All right, Kevin, how you doing? Uh, uh, welcome to the show. Glad they got you on the line. And why don't you talk to the viewers and tell them what you want to talk about? Uh, good morning. You know, today's market is really consumed by the CPI data that just came out that showed a couple things. You know, you saw the violent reaction of futures when that CPI data come out. That That's a couple reasons. CPI, overall inflation, was lower than a month ago, but it was higher than expectations. And that caused a pretty violent reaction in stock futures to start the day. Now, what made this number 
a little stronger than expected? Well, it was looking for 0.2. It came in 0.3. That's significantly lower than a month ago, but higher than expectations. Some of the numbers, actually, it was pretty positive in terms of energy. Energy down 2.7%. Gasoline, a, a, a part of that was down 6.1%. Used cars were down 04 but new cars were up 1.1%. And here's the number that was historic. Transportation services up 3.1%. What does that mean? Airfares up 18.6% in one month. That's the largest one-month increase since this number was start to be measured in 1963. So of oh. all things where we sit today in this economy, it's airline fares that are hurting inflation. Overall, though, it was the core number that came in higher than expected and higher than a month ago, even though the year-over-year year came down from 6.5 to 6.2. So that's what this number is. That's what these markets are dealing with right now. The original reaction, like I said, was violent to the downside. But remember, that is high-frequency trading, getting the expectations, getting the actual number, selling futures off violently. We live in a microwave world right now, and sometimes you got to let these numbers bake. So we're getting a pretty solid recovery here in futures back towards unchanged. NASDAQ's still down, but some of the futures have come back pretty significantly. This day is going to get interesting, guys. I, I totally agree with you. I mean, it's kind of funny. We just, in the last segment, started talking about the euro, and I'm going to start talking about the pound. They're actually not too volatile today, but the yen's been all over the place, and especially in the past couple hours, it's made some uh, radical moves. And there's also some significant breakouts also in a couple other currencies, too. So I'm with you on that one. It's uh, I think we're, as, as we start to... Uh, get through May and head towards summertime, uh, we're gonna not going to settle down into summertime uh, lulls. I think we're going to really have a crazy summer when it comes to market activity. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, you know, we like I said, this economy, I believe that in inflation has peaked. But we're not turning a speedboat around here. We're turning an aircraft carrier. And it's just mm -hmm. not as easy to flip these markets as it was. Things are going to get lumpy. We could mm -hmm. certainly use some help in energy and computer chips and mm -hmm. all these things that are creating some of these problems in use, new and used cars and energy. Mm -hmm. So, so you think you think inflation there, is you think inflation is peaked? Uh, this is going to be a fun summer. Okay, so you think inflation is peaked though? I I, I do think inflation is peaked. Jerome Powell uh -huh. thinks the second half of the year you could see some lightning. Obviously. The war in Ukraine is going to decide this. Grain prices, right? Mm -hmm. It's still been a wet, cold uh, spring here in, in the Midwest, and that's affected planting. But oh, I know. I'm in Illinois. To, it's right. You can't plant, right? Right, exactly. You, you, don't, you, want, you don't want dry, but you don't want really, really wet in terms of planting. And this is a, such a vital time in terms mm -hmm. of getting corn and soybeans in the ground. So Well, and the ground temperature it. was also so cold, too. It just started to warm up literally days ago. You know, that was another problem. The seeds wouldn't have germinated even if they did plant. Right, exactly. You need, you know, I mean, seeds are pretty resilient, but you still need good conditions to get them in the ground. And, and we've had a horrible right cold wet spring here in the midwest right right exactly exactly well i agree with you especially with the car markets i mean you know just a couple months ago all the dealership lots were empty now everywhere around me in chicago and they're packed they're completely packed so if they're charging excessive amounts on used or new cars or whatever then i don't know where that's coming from because their inventory they're, they're starting to sit on inventory that's for sure right now around our, our area here they're getting more inventory around the Chicago area, but I have a friend in the car dealer. They're still not back to where they were. They're still only about a quarter of what, they, sure. what, what they're ordering. So things are flowing out, though, that's for sure. Things are getting better, not great. Right. Right. They're not empty lots when you do. I mean, you should, I mean, literally you drive past some of these mega dealers and I mean, they're huge lots and you would just see their building <laughs> in an empty yeah. parking lot. So yeah. big, beautiful new buildings with no cars. Correct. Exactly. Exactly. So very interesting time. So we'll see how it goes. I think you're right, though. I agree. Without a doubt, this summer is going to be a fun trading summer for sure, you know, which I love it. You know, when, when business is busy, busy is good. You know, I, that's the way I look at it for traders. You know, that's when you get the nice trends, especially. 
Yep, exactly right. And so today on our show, Fast Market, we're going to look at three names, Amazon, Disney, that has earnings tomorrow morning, and then Beyond Meat are the three okay. names that, that we're covering today. We'll look at uh, trading positions in all three of those names. Okay, and Disney, they got hit again yesterday, didn't they? Uh, Disney, I didn't see what it did in her day yesterday. Hold on, I can hit that up and tell you. If I remember, was I th- down yesterday. Now, now it hit a low yesterday, uh, 106.14. Now it's trading a little bit higher this morning, uh-huh. it looks like. Um, pretty much unchanged. It's trading about 107, still down from the high of 187 earlier this right. year in our summer of last year. So down significantly. All right. Well, thank you, Kevin. You have a good week and I uh, appreciate your time on the segment. And uh, we'll see you guys back in just a couple of minutes after this break. Thank you very much. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Hello, everyone. This is Teddy Kekstad from Forex Trading Unlocked, and I'm here filling in for Tommy O'Brien today. We're talking about the Forex markets, and we're going to get into the British pound right now. As you can see, it's a little bit higher on the day, but it's been uh, a bear for sure, um, trending lower for the past couple of uh, not just weeks, but a few months. So, And definitely the market action over the past week and a half has been quite uh, significant. 
So very interesting. We uh, started off the show talking about the euro. Um, the pound uh, also is something right now that you have to really pay attention to the economic numbers in the UK. Um, their economy is uh, not exactly off to a racing start. And right now is showing some signs of where uh, it could start to get a little peak at, if not uh, downright uh, bearish. So if that's the case, that's going to weigh definitely on the British pound, US dollar currency cross and the pound versus some other currencies around the globe. Uh, one of the biggest uh, factors that's helping to push this bear right now is our aggressive interest rate policy versus their uh, interest rate policy in the UK. Um, I would say that the uh, price of oil, as it does uh, continue to start to go and target resistance again, I would say that that may help to hold up the pound dollar um, on this slide or at least keep it from uh, sliding too strongly, especially if you start to see oil get back above $110 a barrel. Um, if that's the case, I would definitely think you're going to find a little bit of price support there. Um, otherwise, there is one thing in the longer term that uh, just a, a little interesting side note. I had, we had a conversation with uh, some gentlemen from both the UK and also the EU, and I asked them both point blank. I'm like, when do you think that the uh, ECB or the, the BOE is going to not just talk about um, – interest rates and stuff like that, when are they actually going to talk about their currency and actually figure out if they're going to defend their currency? Um, one of those ways would be aggressively raising interest rates, um, something like what the Federal Reserve is doing here in the U.S. One of the reasons we have the strength in the U.S. dollar right now is not so much because of the U.S. dollar strength, it's because of these fundamental factors. Um, our interest rate policy is much more aggressive than the other central banks around the world. We obviously were late to the table. Um, that's a whole nother issue but right now we know that at least in the short run that aggressive action is going to continue should that trend continue you're going to probably see the pound us dollar continue to uh, uh test support um as far as how low can it go um the, right now you have the pound at a dollar 23 dollar 23 ish it's a relatively strong level still um the euro is the one that's looking like it wants to go to parity faster than anyone else um but we're gonna as i show you this monthly here you can see that this thing is definitely a bear you know we've been making multiple lows um, now for for the last four months continually on a monthly basis we had don't have quite the sell-off like we had last month but then also it's only May 11th we haven't had that many trading days left um, we are coming into kind of a critical support area if you will on a monthly basis going back to 2016 and I think that this is something you're gonna have to watch out for is that if we can continue to slide if we get down towards this 119 level that's when we start to get very very bearish on the pound us dollar and this would also impact the pound versus many other currency crosses as well so um, should what would actually drive this type of type of trend um, well we know that the economic numbers for the US aren't exactly great either if you listen to uh, Kevin Hanks just now we were he was talking about the CPI and its impact on inflation he thinks that inflation is starting to um, subside uh, interestingly enough that would be great for the whole world um, not every country is um, dealing with inflation though as uh, as much as we are and even as they are in the UK we'll get to touch on that when we get to the uh, US dollar Japanese yen. So, um, but right now, um, I would be very careful about trying to catch a falling knife. Uh, if whatever you have for buy and sell signals, I always tell people, you know, don't be subjective. Always stick to your guns and your systems. Um, but be very careful with any type of currently, like in this situation, a buy signal, which is a counter trend signal. Uh, the momentum, uh, because of not just technical, I mean, technical forces are out the window. Everything is oversold when it comes to the pound US dollar right now. Uh, but fundamentally, there are issues that are not done yet. The, uh, the Russian Ukrainian thing still does weigh on them because they are part of, you know, they're very close and the European connection there is also for trade. They have these embargo, uh, the embargoes that are on Russia also are impacting both the EU and also the UK. So be very careful. Upside potential, I don't think you're going to see very much. The only way you're going to see any real strength, I believe, would be is if you take out this last lower swing high around a dollar 2645 trading above here would still have it just in an upward correction i would be looking for rallies to sell more than breaks to buy when it comes to the pound us dollar all right let's look at the us dollar swiss this is a very interesting uh, rally, if you will, here. Uh, one thing that's very interesting about the Swiss is that 
it typically is a flight to quality currency. Doesn't look like that right now, does it? Um, this rally is going very, very uh, vertical. <clears throat> um, and if you look at it in the past month and a half, we've only had what one, two, three, four down days, with today being one of them. And today is not over yet. Uh, so uh, the trend, obviously, higher move highs and higher move lows continues. Um, why is this so much more severe than what we have? What we're seeing in the uh, with the euro and also with the pound. Normally, you shouldn't see this type of reaction. Uh, well, if you look at when this rally started to accelerate and we broke out to the upside, uh, this is when uh, during the conflict with Russia and Ukraine that the Swiss decided to break neutrality. Um, now, this is not a moral or ethical thing to talk about. That's a whole other topic for another uh, day. Um, but as far as what, how do the Swiss react when it comes to anything in the world, they're always neutral. It doesn't matter. During World War One, during World War Two, during every conflict that we've had in the last hundred plus years, uh, they've never ever sided or um, worked with other countries when it came to go, going, picking sides with one, whether you want to call them allies or Axis or whatever, or whatever time period you're talking about, that never happened before. Um, this is significant, not so much just that, and how it impacts the Russians and how Russians do business through Switzerland and um, other countries do with um, Russia through Switzerland. Um, it also sends a tone as far as the Swiss uh, as far as what they're known for, and that is neutrality. Um, so that means now that any country in the world, even though they're not in conflict right now um, any, with anybody, uh, knows that the Swiss are no longer neutral as far as being not necessarily, it's not the safe haven that it used to be when you hear stories about people hiding money and whatever, uh, making it disappear, if you will. Um, it's not quite like that. Those days are over, however, uh, as far as being a place of security and knowing that um, not only are your funds secure, but you always have access to them. Um, that was one of the nice things about dealing with the Swiss. Those days are now over. So and I think that is why you're seeing this extreme rally with the U.S. dollar Swiss. So what we do have today and I'll be very cautious with this, just like I was saying with the pound um, right now any counter trend signal be very very leery of um, and don't expect to get much out of it I would say that any type of profit taking you have whether um, it's a selling or a buying depending on the currency cross you're talking about with the dollar with Europe um, it's gonna be tough you not you're probably not gonna get very much out of it I would look more for uh, any type of signal that goes with the trend so currently we do have a sell signal that is forming here. If you look at this, uh, how it's shaping up today, this is a bearish engulfing line that is forming. If we were to close right now, you would have a short-term sell signal. Should we have a short-term sell signal today? Um, oh, we'll get to the break and then we'll come back to this. See you in a couple minutes. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, 
as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, everybody. This is Teddy Kekstet from Forex Trading Unlocked, and I'm here filling in for Tommy O'Brien today. We had a couple questions in the chat during the break, and I'm going to address them. Uh, we got one from Duffy here about the U.S. dollar. So we'll take a look at the dollar index after we wrap up this with the Swiss. So um, before we the break, we were talking about we have a high probable Japanese candlestick pattern forming here. This is a bullish engulfing line. That is, if it was to close right now, that's what this would be called, and that would be a sell signal short term counter trend trade that would be targeting definitely a test of this 9706 area in the Swiss. Now, markets tend to go out like they go in. When you look at this extreme rally that we've had that started just before um, April and is now trending all the way into now what is almost the middle of May, um, that's pretty extreme, especially uh, if you were in the, listening to the last segment, we were talking about how it relatively um, different the, the Swiss is compared to the euro and the pound as far as falling apart versus the dollar in the last month and a half. Okay, so if we do fall apart and start to get a nice little correction going on here. The first layer of support here is this 9706. This was our last upward uh, higher move swing low. We now made a higher move high as of yesterday. We'll see. Who knows? The day is not over. We could see a snapback, um, especially right now. Uh, the bonds are falling apart, and so is the 10-year. They were uh, much firmer earlier today, um, and as we get into the yen, uh, we'll talk about what's going on with that. It's going to also impact the Swiss. So be very careful. As I was saying with the other markets, normally um, you would – take your counter trend trades and trade normally. I would be very cautious when it comes to the European currency crosses because the momentum is too hard, okay? Uh, so uh, now let's get to the dollar index. Oh, we have a caller, okay, um, sure. Hello? Yes. How you doing? Good, yourself? I'm doing well, what's your question today? Uh, my question is, what are the best ETFs to use to trade currencies? Oh, that's a, that's a difficult question for as far as ETFs. Um, and especially in today's market environment right now, if I were you, I would stay away from all currency ETFs. They're, uh, normally, I like them, um, especially when you have normal market conditions. Uh, but with what's going on right now, I would, I would just totally be hands off on ETFs. Now, what I would do is if you want to trade the ETFs, any of the currency ETFs, trade options on them, uh, straddles okay. and strangles. I would look for that. But as far as the actual ETFs themselves, I would – just stay hands off right now, especially while you have this conflict going on with uh, the Russian and Ukraine right now. That's for sure. Okay, good enough. The reason I was asking is because I 
don't know how to set, use options. I use Ameritrade. Okay. Okay. Um, and I've listened to you in the past, and I think there used to be things like EUO or something like uh-huh. EUR, and then it doesn't seem to be out there anymore. So I didn't know if it was doable without doing options and without buying, okay. you know, currency. Or I'm just trying looking for an easy way to to trade them. Mm-hmm. Um, so it sounds like right now is not a good time, anyways. Well, I got a good. Which is uh, fine. Yeah. I got a good suggestion for you. Um, if you go to my YouTube channel, Forex Trading Unlocked, mm-hmm. I have different channels set up and playlists. Um, I have one for options. I did do um, a uh, webinar specifically on ETFs and options on how to trade uh, ETFs with options. Okay. So you might want to check that out as a, um, a base to start to get kind of an idea of what to look at, you know, and take it from there because there is definitely a lot of um, – opportunity with those markets, but I, de- I would use a lot of cautions with the actual ETF instrument right now and, and look at, into the options first. Sure. Well, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. And if you have a minute, maybe you can um, talk about oil for a minute when you uh, get a chance. Well, I, can, I, can, I can do that. Let me talk about the dollar index real quick, and then I'll get to oil right after that. How about that? Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Okay. Thanks, bud. You're welcome. All right, so let's talk about the dollar index for Duffy that's out there, and then we'll get to the caller's questions. So the dollar index, as you can see from yesterday, we're riding the, the highs. It looks like an upside down Euro US dollar chart. So um, the question is, is um, from Duffy is, do you think US dollar strength will continue? I do. As long as you see the pound and the euro continue to make new lows, um, you're going to see st- st- the index, dollar index, continue to progress higher. The euro is the number one component. The pound is the uh, is the number three. Uh, the, the yen, which we're going to get to, is number two. We're going to get to that and show you how I that also is helping to drive the dollar index higher. So, But once again, like I said earlier in the broadcast, it's not so much that the dollar is a bull and there's dollar strength, it's just that the other currencies are that weak, okay? So let me go back to US dollar JPY and I'll also pull up the crude chart. All right, so crude, let's see, let's see. If we go to the CME site, if I remember right, they were slightly higher a little bit ago. Go to energy. Everything's in a lag here for the futures. I don't want to be non-compliant. Yeah, they're up five bucks. Okay, so if you see where crude is going on right now, it's been wedging. Uh, we've come to this point where people are making choices. Um, is the supply issue is something that work as we come into springtime, you're going to have to expect that supply is going to be under pressure because demand is going to go up, especially like when we were talking, uh, Kevin Hanks mentioned planting coming up. Uh, that's going to be huge. Farm engines are going to start to be turning up the a notch. You know, you're going to have a lot of uh, heavy machinery throughout the U.S. It's going to be starting to consume diesel, you know, so um, gas is not the only component of oil. So and that's something I think that uh, those issues are going to drive the uh, the demand for oil. Um, another thing is that with this conflict, as the way it's continuing, as uh, I think the supply chain for oil also is going to become more restrictive. Um, there's also an, the issue that's going on with China and Shanghai. This is also going to impact oil, um, making it more bullish. And unless we start to turn our pumps back on and reverse you know, something that was set in stone right now by a mandate, uh, that's not going to change. Uh, I, I believe that we're going to see oil probably test this last swing high that we had a few sessions back here right around 111 if we breach this area here I mean if you look at it since the middle of April um, we established this low we made a lower move high we made a higher move low a higher move high okay short run this wedge is now trending as a bull we came down here as of yesterday now we're trading back five dollars higher we're coming off a new higher swing low trend is your friend my friend uh friend no pun intended so i think you're going to see strength going on continue with that um another thing is we're also making the switch um i don't know where you're located in the united states but especially like areas like the midwest irony irony of it all i'm in chicago land we're less than 80 miles away from one of the biggest refineries in the country and every time they switch their blend um we end up paying more than everybody else so i know that 
in the short run in the Midwest, we're going to spike up higher as far as pricing. All right, let's get to the U.S. dollar yen. Very interesting trade here today. Since we started this webinar, this market's been all over the place today um, on an hourly basis. Look at this. Like I said, here's it's sold off since we started this show. Um, right before the show, it rallied huge. It went from a dollar twenty nine eighty up to one thirty eighty. That is a huge radical move. So this is when we had the CPI data. You can see that economic numbers have had some sort of an impact on somebody's trade today. So uh, um, I have been that long and we're going to go to commercial break and then have one more segment. See you in a couple minutes, guys. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. With market volatility roaring back in April, Larry Pesavento has just announced a five-hour live trading webinar coming up on May 17th. Larry Pesavento is a 56-year trading veteran and has mastered his trading skills through many different market fluctuations. Join Larry on May 17th as he hosts a live five-hour trading webinar from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern Time, giving you insight into how he analyzes the market and decides his plays. Larry will delve deep into the ABCD trading pattern, explaining how to structure your trading day, the times most likely to generate signals, which signals to ignore, and how to use the pattern to mitigate risk. In this all-day five-hour live trading webinar, take a seat by Larry's side as he trades the market markets real time, including the Dow and S&P 500 E-mini, crude oil, natural gas, gold, treasury bonds, wheat and soybeans, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar yen, and more. If you've ever wanted to get inside the mind of a market master, you cannot miss this live trading webinar. To sign up today, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hello, everyone. This is Teddy Kekstedt from Forex Trading Unlocked. I'm filling in for Tommy O'Brien today, and we're talking about the Forex markets. So in this last segment, we're going to kind of race around. We just uh, we're starting to talk about the U.S. dollar yen. 
And a couple comments on the chat too. Very thankful for your guys' uh, input and stuff like that. Someone even said, "Nice charts, very crisp." So if you want to use these charts, as just like we're using in real time, uh, you go to the forex-trading-unlock.com website, and from the market analysis and education, just hit the workstation tab, and that will bring you to this page where you can look at all the economic numbers for the week, and they get you based by the currencies and whatever. This helps you to definitely figure out what's going on and what's helping to influence the trends in these markets. So you. U.S. dollar yen actually didn't have very many numbers to pay attention to this week. The CPI from today for the U.S. did actually make it move. Um, we've had a lot of volatility with the bonds tanking and the 10-year also hitting new lows uh, on the day. I think that you would not, would definitely want to see um, the bulls come back in the U.S. dollar yen, especially with oil up as well. Uh, we've had. Uh, quite the volatility since uh, basically last hour and a half since right before we started this uh, broadcast. And I think it's going to continue today. I believe bullish momentum is going to be the call, though. I think you drained out a lot of weak uh, shorts and, or excuse, <clears throat> excuse me, weak longs. And right now you're going to get ready to make a run at resistance again. Uh, the Bank of Japan originally wanted to say that they were going to defend their currency once it got to a dollar thirty. Well, right now it's trading a dollar thirty twenty, and it got up to already over a dollar thirty one, and it looks like it wants to breach resistance again. So I think right now. Now you got to ride the trend. I've been long this thing for a while now. I mean, anyone that watches me on my segments with Tommy, they know I've been long this for since last summer. So I would uh, look to continue to buy breaks in this market uh, with the interest rate. Uh, uh, correlation right now between uh, the Japanese yen and the U.S. dollar. That's a fundamental force that makes the U.S. dollar a bull versus the yen. The price of oil right now as it starts to spike higher through resistance, that's also going to play into this. And as the trend is your friend. So right now, I think you have to just continue with that. And now we are done with the show, I believe. You guys have a good day and thanks for uh, showing up today. See you guys soon. Next, or next Wednesday, I'll be on with Tommy. 